Welcome to the Center of Light Radio with spiritual teacher, intuitive, musician, composer, and best-selling author of The Divine Principle, Anchoring Heaven on Earth, your host, Keith Anthony Blanchard. Coast to coast, pole to pole, all around the world on the internet, thanks to the marvel of technology, I am coming at you live from my little old guest house in Memphis, Tennessee. This is Keith Anthony Blanchard, and you're listening to Center of Light Radio, Center of Divine Unfoldment and Reinforcement Radio for the Soul and the Transformation Station. A couple of adverts, we're going to get right down to our guest. We've got a powerful show for you tonight. Um, very soon in September, Swamji Viswayogi, this man, if you're looking at video, that I have a picture up for you to see, is going to be coming back to Memphis, Tennessee. This will be the third time I interview Swamji, and as I always say, when you're in the presence of a divine man like this, you can feel it. You can feel it bones to bones through your soul and everywhere around you. Um, he's coming to town in his theme, his tour this year. His theme is healing the earth by purifying the water. So you can bet I'm going to be asking a whole bunch of questions, for example, about Fukushima about the BP spill in the Gulf of Mexico, about the fluoride in our drinking water, about Flint, Michigan, hence the theme, purifying the earth, healing the earth by purifying the waters. I'm not sure exactly what date that interview is going to air due to the fact that uh, we're going to be videoing uh, the interview as well, as well as live on Facebook, as well as live on YouTube. So once we get all this under wraps, I'll let you know the exact day this interview with God Realized Man Swamsi Viswayogi is going to land. Kenneth Pass was a recent guest on Center of Light Radio. When he was eight years old, give or take, he was abducted by aliens, brought back 10,000 years. He was on a camping trip at a camp, and some of the kids went on hiking, some of the kids and the uh, adults, and they were taken back. And Kenneth swears that if you're familiar with Prophecy Rock, that's him. The, the petroglyph on Prophecy Rock is a picture of him coming out of the spaceship. So here's the deal. Kenneth is a really simple guy, and he wants to go back to Arizona or wherever this place is that he was 10,000 years. Because while he was spending time with the aliens, one of them pissed him off pretty good. And so he hid a piece of their powerful technology. And he wants to go back and get that technology. Uh, but Kenneth is a very simple guy, does not drive, so we want to get get some money for him to give him a bus ticket so he can log his experience while he's there and come back for part two in Center of Light Radio because he wants to give this piece of technology to the Hopi and the Pueblo. Uh, he says they will know exactly what to do in it. So what you do is you go to centeroflightradio.com. When the page settles, there's lots of moving parts. Um, you'll see a donate button under a flying saucer, <laughs> of course. Uh, click that button. Donate what you can. We're almost to our goal. Uh, we want to raise about $500 to give him a round-trip ticket. So $5, a buck, 10 bucks, whatever you got. Let's make that happen for Kenneth. It would bring absolutely a lot of peace in his life. Um, so that is that. Also, a couple of quick more announcements. Uh, I do a lot of services. For many years, I've been doing speaking presentations, life-changing presentations on spirituality, divine incarnations, extraterrestrials. And many other things. Uh, but I help people live their passion. That's what I do. That is my passion, is to help people live their passion. I can do, I can cater to any theme that you may have for any venue. You may have any place in the country that you may want me to come and speak. Uh, I do life coaching. I do spiritual readings. Eh, let's not call them spiritual readings. Let's just call it uh, helping you find your own way. Because sometimes we're a little bit too close to ourselves and... You just kind of step back a little bit, and I'm that guy. I can open you up and help you make the choices by providing you with some clarity. And that way you can have the aha moment that you are needing. And that's that's what I'll do. I'm, I don't like calling it psychic readings or spiritual readings. That's just not the way of it for me. Also, if you have squatters in your house, spiritual squatters, you have some dark energies moving about your house, and they're not paying rent, and you want them going. Contact me. I guarantee you that I will not leave you until we are successful with our endeavor of bringing your house back to the peaceful home that you desire and deserve. Now it's time to get down to Center of Light Radio business. Make sure you dial 888-919-2355, 888-919-2355. If you want to be in the show to speak to myself or my phenomenal guest that we have today, Azra Bertrand, and we will be discussing, and I'm curious to know a little bit more about this, and I'm sure I'm probably going to know exactly what he's talking about, but by the name of it, I'm just not sure yet. We're going to be discussing Womb Awakening. Azra Bertrand, MD, is founder and director of the Fountain of Life Grail Mystery School and co-author of the groundbreaking new book, Womb Awakening. Uh, initiatory 
wisdom from the creatrix of all life, along with his wife, Sarah Bertrand. The Womb Awakening book has been described by New York Times bestselling authors as masterwork of beauty, power, and mystical truth, a mystery school in a book, and a magical, sacred, feminine transmission. Ozzo graduated from Duke University School of Medicine and has been pioneering doctor, has been a pioneering doctor, alchemical scientist, and spiritual guide for 20 years. He is an evolutionary enchanter dedicated to helping women awaken their womb power and to assisting the rebirth of the masculine into his true gifts, uniting them both in sacred union. Immersed in the study and shamanic practice of womb consciousness, he draws on rich veins of wisdom from many traditions and has assisted over, listen to this, and has assisted over 25,000 people to heal on physical, emotional, and spiritual level. You can find Ozra Bertrand, more about his work at www.thefountainoflife.org. Welcome back to Center of the Radio, my friend, my brother. Thank you, Keith. I'm excited to be here today. It's been a few years since I was on your show last, and I remember the last one was, was a great experience because your, you know, your enthusiasm just helps bring out all of the different pieces that I wish to be shared. So I'm excited to be here. Well, brother, I can tell you when you was on that show with me that you were referring to, I had a lot of openings, a lot of things opened up, a lot of epiphanies. Uh, and I, I, believe it or not, I often think about that interview uh, to this day. Um, some of the dialogue we had was pretty, pretty powerful. So let's dive right into the meat and potatoes. Tell me a little more about this new work that's getting all these rave uh, reviews. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So my beloved wife, Saren Bertrand, and I, we just wrote, about, actually just published, released this book, Womb Awakening, the Initiatory Wisdom from the Creatrix of All Life. This book has been five years in the writing, in a lifetime in the making, at least one lifetime, multiple lifetimes, really. And really what Womb Awakening is, it is a, a, a treatise or a manifesto a, and a mystery school in a book. And it's about the revolution of feminine consciousness that's coming onto the planet. Now, when I say that, often men start to feel a little uneasy. You know, am I included? Am I a part of this? But this is a revolution in consciousness for men and women, obviously, and I'm interested in it. And, and it, it's, it's, a, you know, it's, it's a, a fundamental shift in, in where we are going, really, as a, as a planet and as a race and as a, and as a species. And, and so in this book, we, we've written a lot about this. And tonight, what I wanted to do was to speak really about the science behind womb awakening. And my background, as you mentioned, I'm a medical doctor. I've done research at the National Institutes of Health here in the U.S., which is a, you know, a big research institute for those who, who don't know that, uh, on, on primal bonding and, and, and attachment and mother-child mother bonding and, and an interest in physics. And, and so one of the most interesting things is that as we, uh, along with this real shift in, in consciousness, that's coming onto the planet. There is a shift in, in the science. There is really, science is undergoing a, a big sea change, really um, a, a complete shift from what people used to think of as a, a very concrete, practical, what, what I would call a Newtonian worldview, a really mechanistic and materialistic, to more of a quantum worldview. And, and in that quantum worldview, just as the ancient Taoist sages wrote about, and the ancient Vedic sages wrote about, there is this ground of consciousness, this yin field, or what we call a quantum womb field, from which births amazing things, things that would be considered miraculous. And, and so I'm excited to just share a few of these stories. It's really, it's really huge. You know, we, <laughs> we wrote 520 pages about it with, with over 400 references and but but tonight there's some real, some key pieces I'd like to share with everyone. Yeah, by all means. The last dialogue you and I had, there was I'd say a good bit of this kind of perspective, way of seeing things, and no pun intended, the womb um, conversation we had about 
it opened me up. It gave me a new birth of way of seeing the as above, so below, the micro and the macro. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, it's done the same for me as well. So, so we'll continue. It's a, it's a rich field. We spoke about certain things last time, and I wanted to bring in some new pieces this time. And so, let's begin with our biology. So, last time we were speaking a lot about the revolution in physics, and we might touch that again tonight. But, but let's talk about our incredible biology. And and the piece I like to begin with is something called menstrual blood stem cells. And this idea of a spiritual medicine and a regenerative medicine, and and I'll just you know I'll just tell people a little bit about stem cells, just a little background, so you understand understand a little more about where we're coming from. So we all start life as a single fertilized egg from our mother's body, a one egg, and then that egg divides into two, then four cells, then eight, then sixteen, then thirty-two, etc., and eventually differentiates into this full adult human of 50 trillion cells, all from that single cell, that one cell that contains within it the codes of life, this power to create an entirely new body, to create organs, to create any cell in the body, a heart cell, a blood cell, immune system cell, etc., all come from this single egg. That is the, the quintessential stem cell. Now what happens when we're forming as beings in our mother's wombs, those first sets of divisions, one, two, four, eight, sixteen, etc., all of those early cells retain the capacity to, in essence, completely regrow a human body. They can become any cell. These are, these are stem cells. All right? There's an incredible power. Now, I've been working with stem cells as a holistic doctor and, and in the spiritual consciousness around stem cells for a long time. And I'll, I'll share a story as, as this book, the Womb Awakening book, was birthing. My wife, Sarah, and I understood that there was an enormous power in the womb. And it was not just spiritual, not just to birth children, but also there was this regenerative power. And we knew this because if you look in every culture around the world, every ancient culture, you see these myths. They're the same in almost, in almost every, every mythology, in almost every culture of the incredible healing power of menstrual blood. And menstrual blood has been called by so many names. It's been called Amrita, Ambrosia, Soma. It's been called the river of life, the, the flower, the, you, you know, by, by so many names in all these, in all these traditions. And, and associated with immortality, associated with uh, allowing the gods to maintain their life so the gods would stay healthy by coming in contact with with this sacred power held in the female womb. This is the power to, to renew life, to regenerate life. It was represented by menstrual, menstrual blood. Now, of course, in our age, menstrual blood is, you know, menstruation is considered a bit of a curse, you know. Oh, you know, bad mood, <laughs> premenstrual right? syndrome. Um, but it wasn't so in the ancient days. It was considered this incredible shamanic experience and initiatory journey. And so... As the material for our book was coming through, we were my wife and I, we were in the Himalayas in northern India, and this beautiful village, about 7,000 feet, and walking through an ancient forest. So it was one of these primordial forests. It felt like being in a cathedral. And, and Saren stopped me. She actually just stopped on the path, put her hand on me, and said, oh, oh my God, I'm getting a womb knowing coming through, that the womb can, contains stem cells. And these stem cells can be given to other humans, anyone. They can be given to anyone. And it will heal them. And someday, relatively soon, humans will be able to access this and use this. And, and I, you know, my, my, at that moment, in my logical and scientific brain, I said, no, 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 no. <laughs> you know, uh, it, you, that can't be. You know, I've, I've studied stem cells. I, it, they're not present in menstrual blood. I've, I've, you know, I've been doing this work for 10 years. I've never heard of that. And, and what's more, you have to match stem cells. You, they have to be an exact genetic match. It's like... You know, you hear about uh, people with cancer looking for the perfect blood donor match. And, and so, no, no, you can't, you, you know, it, it can't be that way. So, but, but Saren was convinced. And so I went home and I, and I dove into the medical database. And my God, I looked and I saw a, a colleague, not just anyone, but a man that I knew that was working in the field had discovered the existence of menstrual blood stem cells or 
endometrial regenerative cells. And not only had he discovered their existence and published them, but he had already written about five articles. And the articles that he had written had shown that they shrink brain cancer, that they can completely regrow arteries, that they can uh, do amazing things. A single menstrual blood stem cell can turn into a heart cell in two days' time and, and beat spontaneously. And in general, wow. the, and it, is, it is incredible. And, and the field of stem cell medicine, for those who are paying attention, is a tens of billions of dollar research in, industry. The, the potential for healing is, is I mean, it is, it is miraculous. It's, it's truly miraculous. And it, in, my, in my work and in my practice, I saw stem cells injected intravenously into a vein migrate spontaneously to the heart of a man who had had a massive heart attack and who could barely walk, completely regrow his heart in 12 months' time. This cardiologist calls me on the phone and said, I don't know what you've done to this man, but, but he, I, his, his heart is healed. I've never seen that before in my life. Wow, wow, wow. Azra, let me ask you this, bro. If menstrual blood happens at a time when a woman cannot get pregnant, mm. ironically, as from your description, it's a very hyperfertile. <laughs> the blood itself at this time in a woman's, I guess they call it uh, uh, menstrual cycle, but also the moon, it's a hyperfertile. I mean, what happens between said day and day number one of the new cycle? I mean, yeah. do you have any idea what's going on? Well, what begins yeah, to move? Yeah, and so, and so this is how, when I spoke to the, the researcher who, who discovered them, I said, you know, how did you know? <laughs> what clued you in? We were studying it from a mythologic point of view and in the ancient, you know, a spiritual point of view. And he said, I just came to me one day. I, I had this, this intuitive knowing. How is it that this, because it's the, it's the lining of the womb, it's the endometrial lining that sustains the life of a child, that becomes the placenta. Half of the placenta comes from the mother, half from the baby. But it, it has to completely regrow enough to support a life every month and then shed itself and renew itself every month. So if you can imagine how rich and fertile this womb lining is, it's like, it's like if you can imagine a fertile soil that grows this incredible garden, but it somehow is renewing itself every month. Well, these are the, this is the magic of these stem cells that have the power to, to, to do this. And it is, it is truly an incredible power it's the power to create life and it's held in the female body and and one one teaspoon of menstrual blood contains 10,000 of these stem cells just one teaspoon and month after month it comes as this gift and a blessing and that was what it was known as men, the moon when menstruation was known originally to our ancient mothers and fathers thousands of years ago as the blessing as the blessing of life so I am starting to understand from our previous conversation as well as this one. The womb is not that which most guys, <laughs> most people think it is. It's so much more. It is constantly being imbued with life-giving properties, life-giving energy, even though it's not in creating life, per se, in the form of a child. It is mm -hmm. always keeping itself fertile, always keeping itself, so to speak, uh, trigger happy, ready to go at any moment it needs to be, mm. and, and it's it's and everything just bursts out. Of and last time you and I we talked about cosmic womb, mm. and the picture I'm getting now is I'm seeing them. In fact, I'm not seeing any separation whatsoever. It's the yeah. same. It's just a portal for the cosmic life stream. As above, so below. The <laughs> microcosm, the macrocosm, and this is the nature of the book we've written, Womb Awakening. It's it came to us in a, in, a, in a download. So Saren and I, as, as we met each other, opened our hearts to each other, and fell in love, it was through our relationship and our love and our openness that all of this information started coming in. And, and we began to really understand, wow, the, the, the spiritual power of the womb. And, and men, of course, don't have a physical womb. But men do have a hara, as it's known in the, in the Japanese tradition. Hara was, was considered the center of gravity or the center of movement. And so 
anyone who is familiar with the Shinto tradition or Japanese martial arts, uh, karate, knows that you move from the hara, and when you move from this, this center, then you are moving with the force, so to speak. You know, you're, you're moving with the flow of life. And hara actually is, means low belly and womb in Japanese. And it was the same concept in the Taoist tradition in China, the lower Dantian, this amazing magical center. And, and, but it's the womb center. So it's a spiritual center as much as a, a physical center. And not only that, but for thousands and thousands of years, really hundreds of thousands of years, the entire globe, every culture, every, every corner of the globe was a part of a vast womb religion that recognized this incredible power and that honored it and, and did whatever it took to protect it and, and activate it and bloom it open, men and women. And through that, amazing new creations of consciousness would come onto the planet. Not just physical children, but creations of consciousness. And the womb was the center of our human spiritual evolution for literally hundreds of thousands of years. And that changed about 5,000 years ago when, with the advent of a more patriarchal, religious, and, and cultural movement on the planet. Would you say that you and Siren are on that you're the front runners of an old new technology? Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> right. We we sometimes find ourselves writing the ancient new <laughs> path of of opening into womb consciousness because it, it's absolutely true. It's an ancient path and and and, it's, and and we are we are sharing it in a, a, a powerful way, and we are not the only ones though. But this tradition, we are standing on the shoulders of giants, so to speak, giantesses probably, because these uh, traditions are present in so much. They're at the base of every spiritual system, and we write about this in the book how that is, and 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 every mythology, and and in this modern day, there are people pulling together pieces of the story. And, and for us, as we began to learn about all of the different pieces, we wanted to pull it all together into literally a mystery school in a book. And, and that's what this book is, Womb Awakening. It's, it's written in a, in a state of feminine consciousness. And we'll get to this in a moment too, because I want to speak about the brain and feminine consciousness and what that means. Uh, but we wrote it from a state of feminine consciousness. So it's flowery it's poetic it's imaginal it's it's mystifying and mystical and and yeah but but that was the goal was to pull it all together into one place so people could appreciate how big this piece is it's a new cosmology really a new way of viewing the world so as you mentioned a little earlier it's obvious that when you and your wife met Something beyond <laughs> your own understanding was blossoming, and it, the linear timeline has to go by for you guys to make sense of this. And so now that you you guys are working together, and you have this success that you haven't so far with this book, or other people wanting to jump on board this train. Well, there is an incredible energy behind this, and and what we like to say is we're grateful that this grand idea this grand meme is using us to to get itself back into the world and so we are vessels that does not come from us of course and and what we see as we look around is we see so many people are tapping into this stream and sharing it in their own ways in different ways different pieces different elements different flavors and we we joke and we say well remember 30 years ago 35 years ago yoga was this very esoteric thing, you know. A few people did yoga. They were typically uh, guru. I mean, they were typically devotees of gurus, and you know, uh, maybe in California, a little ex ex exception there. But really, it, it was it was not very common. Well, in the next ten years, the womb <laughs> and paths to heal and open the womb is going to be the new yoga, because as if you think about it, the womb is how we birth children into the world. Well, it's not just children. It's the womb is how we birth everything into the world. It's how we manifest and how we call in our law of attraction. Most people don't know this, though. But the more people start to understand, oh my gosh, 
this is coming from my womb power. I need to heal my womb. I need to clear my womb. I need to open it. I need to activate it. So you're not it. necessarily just speaking about the womb on the woman's physical body. No. You're speaking about <laughs> a portal that exists all around everyone all the time. Yeah. There is an invisible vortex that when we take time yeah. and sincere intention, that that gate begins yeah. to open. So yeah. how do we begin to enter <laughs> no pun intended the womb yeah exactly that's it that's exactly right it's a doorway <laughs> into funny, consciousness but... <laughs> yeah and, and and but that's and, and that is the exactly what you say how do we pass through this doorway well this is the same question that shamans have been asking for thousands and thousands of years and if you begin to study the origins of shamanism what you find is that shamans originally and many shamans still today the way they travel to other world, to spiritual world, to the dream world, however they call it, is through a womb portal of consciousness. And they may do that through a peyote button. And if you look at the, at the drawings of peyote, you see these concentric circles or, or these, uh, you don't have to see it, I guess, but these concentric rings that you, you travel through. It was the same with the aboriginal Australians. It's the same with, with uh, the the Inuit in other uh, um, Eskimo tribes in Alaska. It was the same in, with almost every, every culture. They recognized this, yeah, this is the Winged Gate. You even see this iconography on the, on the depictions of the Ark of the Covenant in Christian symbology. And you, see, I, you know, it goes on and on from there, but that's the idea. Well, how do we travel through this gateway? How do we open it? How do we activate it? How do we clear it? And, and this is the, the art and science of the mystery schools as they have been in place for 4,000 years. 2,000 years ago, they were common. And one of, the, one of the big ones was in Eleusis in Greece, but they were all over the world. They were in the indigenous traditions as well. Um, but in the, in the mystery schools and in the shamanic tradition, the art and the process was altering our consciousness to be able to access what we would call a womb consciousness, and that is to step out of the logical, rational, analytical, masculine mind, the cerebral cortex, that we, that's our normal daily consciousness as we walk around the planet. Now, it didn't used to be our normal daily consciousness. So our, uh, our ancestors 30,000, 40,000 years ago were occupying a very different state of consciousness. And you hear about it in the mythology. So in the aboriginal mythology, this was called the dream time. And the ancient Egyptian mythology, this was called the Zeptepi, the first time. And this, this concept of, wow, our consciousness used to be open, but somehow we fell. And we need to do whatever it takes to reopen these doorways and to reclaim this incredible consciousness. Because it's through this consciousness that we can access our our most incredible creative power. And I'll give you a quick example, right? And so let's talk about intention and manifestation and the law of attraction, which, you know, most, most everyone who has a, a, a spiritual bent is interested in this because they realize the power of their intention. Now, you know, and I know, and everybody knows, is you can have this great intention. <laughs> you can have all the willpower you want, but if that intention is not sourced deep in the soul, in the desire body, in the feeling body, in our hearts, and in our, our wombs, our horrors for men, not much happens. But when, when that intention has, has the power of desire and feeling and has the power of, of our, our kind of creative life force, then it starts to happen because we're, we're tapping into this deeper level. And, and one of the things that our book does, a womb waking book, is it puts forward a really radical new conception of consciousness. And, and it draws on some of the pieces that have been pioneered by others, but it really it puts it into a new perspective that this shamanic consciousness or mystical consciousness, actually where it happens in the brain, how we, how we begin to access that. 888-919-2355, 888-919-2355 is the number you dial if you want to get on the air. You can get on Center of Light Radio with myself or my phenomenal guest, Ozra Bertrand. Ozra, we're at the bottom of the hour. Would you give out your contact information so our audience can find more about you and this phenomenal work you're doing with Siren? Yes, yes. So if you, if you wish to learn more, find us at thefountainoflife.org for 
books, classes, CDs, uh, community. It's, there's a whole world there. A, min- a minute ago, you mentioned how, I mentioned as well, how this is old technology coming back via you and Saren. But we've been calling this womb many different things for a very, very long time. Stargates, portals, black holes, wormholes, or whatever, implying an opening. But I think the tone, the vibration, the timber, the texture of, instead of calling it a portal, by calling it a womb, changes the whole, the whole, <laughs> it, it has a new characteristic to it. It's much more softer. It feels like there, it, it, it creates a great deal of respect, a great mm. humility, because mm. it's mother. Yeah, exactly. Versus right. Just a portal that I'm just going to travel through and just cross the threshold and run through into it. You know what I mean? It yeah. creates a ritual, a, a practice of sincerity. Yeah, exactly. And this is the way the ancient people used to relate to the world. They related to the world as in the universe, as if it were a living, sentient being, and a living, sentient being with maternal-like qualities. When I say maternal qualities, I mean that has the power to birth and rebirth that actually contains a quality of love. And so the ancients knew that love was the fabric of the universe, and and this love consciousness held it all together. And and so you're exactly right. The way that our, our science and spirituality has conceived of it recently is separated from this mother consciousness that birthed us. And if you can imagine, for for every woman and man on the show, what it would be like if our culture profoundly supported our mothers, profoundly. If everything was oriented to helping them heal, to helping them feel safe, to helping them be supported, to helping them live in a way that was true to their own souls and interconnected with Gaia and in a very peaceful, gentle, loving, soft situation. What would happen if all our mothers had this experience of love and support? what would we be as human beings? And really, the answer is very simple. We would be an incredible race of of what we would consider to be superhuman beings or avatars. And and that is the truth of it. As we begin to heal our relationship to this birthing portal that we we view of as the womb and, and as the ancients viewed of as the womb, so much becomes possible, not just in our own lives, in our own spiritual path, but for our our children, and literally on a biological level, when a mother's womb is healed and when she's held in a, a container of love, she begins to birth avatars of a new earth. She begins to birth children whose epigenetic codes, so whose, uh, well, I'll explain that in a minute maybe, but whose epigenetic codes are fully turned on, fully aligned, f- free from trauma, or at least much, much more healed. And in doing that, we have access to so much more uh, consciousness, truly, and and so this is this is it's a whole it's a whole cosmology, it's a whole world view. I had someone recently on Center of Light Radio say about a year ago, we were talking about the divine feminine, and she laid out an, um, a picture, an image of Christ being on the cross, and the three women who mm. never got any credit, <laughs> who yeah. is at the foot of the cross, in sorrow, mm. um, and compassion holding it down, so to speak, Mm. that they were the opening. So I guess my question to you, let's use that very same image. Jesus being crucified, three women on the ground, being very compassionate, and being open. Would Mm. you say that through such an experience, or even if it's metaphorical, Mm. that it's likely Christ was rebirthed into the divine through the cosmic womb? That is so exactly what it is. <laughs> it, it is Yay for me. <laughs> good word. Yeah. Most, most people um, don't make that leap automatically, but that's exactly what was happening. And so the three Marys, which was a, an aspect of the triple, the old concept of the triple goddess or the different, the different aspects of the feminine were holding open this womb portal for Yeshua the man and this incredible spiritual energy that some people call the Christ energy, which he embodied, to come through and allow his descent actually down to the very center of the earth, the center of matter on a spiritual level. Rudolf Steiner writes about this actually as well. 
and and to bring this incredible spirit and cosmic consciousness down to the center of the earth to free Sophia and free the earth who had been trapped under several thousand years of, of oppression. This was his, Yeshua was one of his mission, and also in the process rebirth himself, right? And, and Yeshua was, was in the tomb for three days, and he was anointed on the way down by Mary Magdalene. He was anointed, he was greeted uh, as he came out by Mary Magdalene, and, and Mary Magdalene was the womb portal, a- along with the other Marys that, that ushered in and helped create this journey and make it possible for Yeshua. Now, interestingly, the, the, we write a lot about this in the book, but the symbolism is profound. It's, it, there's so much symbolism, and it, it's not just in the Christian tradition, but this same concept was present in the Egyptian tradition with Osiris and Isis and Naphthys midwifing his rebirth. And so, it, anyway, it goes into many traditions, but the name Magdalene was a priestess name. So the name Magdalene in the ancient Semitic languages, Mag, meant great or magical. Dal, as in the, the Semitic letter Daleth, meant portal or doorway. So the name Magdalene means magical doorway or magical portal, and it's the womb portal. And the, the Dal, Daleth, was originally a womb symbol. It was a downward pointing triangle, which is the, the oldest symbol of the, the feminine womb in existence, going back tens of thousands of years. Isn't that the symbology of the Star of David? That yeah. you have a triangle coming up and a triangle coming down. Mm. That one is the extension of, let's just say, heaven, mm. divine feminine, mm. expressing itself down where we are mm. and us back up to it. And that creates a marriage or union. Or yeah. the womb begins to open up through your sincerity of being birthed back into the divine. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly right. Right. So the the... The Star of David, the Seal of Solomon, was one downward pointing triangle interlaced with one upward pointing triangle. And it's the same in the, in the Sri Yantra and the Vedic traditions, the same concept of the interlaced triangles. The down pointing triangle represents the feminine energy, the up pointing triangle represents the masculine energy, and it's a symbol of sacred union. And this is one of the, the keys in creation is bringing together, uniting the masculine and feminine flows. And when those two flows are united, amazing creations of consciousness can come forth. Just like it takes a man and a woman to come together to form a baby, you know, a child. Well, the same thing is happening with the masculine and feminine energy flows. And it goes beyond even just male and female because any man contains both of these energy flows. Any woman contains both of these energy flows. But when, as Yeshua said, when the two become one, and, and shame is trampled underfoot, and you, and then you can enter the queendom of heaven. And this is a great, another great fact, right? So the kingdom of heaven, as it's translated in all the Bibles, the Aramaic phrase for that is Malkuta de Shemaya. And Malkuta de Shemaya, literally, it, it means the queendom of, he- of heaven, <laughs> the queendom right. of shimmering light and sound. And, and Mal- Malkut was a, was a name for queen, and was an old goddess in the uh, in the Middle East a long time ago, before Yahweh in the, in the Judaic tradition. Uh, and so, <laughs> right, the queendom of heaven. This is how we enter the queendom of heaven. And, and Go ahead, go ahead. Is there a meditation that you would offer mm. for one to be able to move into the womb mm. the, the, of the cosmic womb, the spiritual womb, would be it on whatever plane it's, it's on the etheric, and I'm sure it's on all of them because there's a hole between here and heaven. But is there a particular meditation or imagery that you would invite or support someone in as they would meditate so they can find themselves nicely in such spiritual energies? Yeah, yeah. Well, absolutely. It can be a very simple. And, and I'll say this. <laughs> we made it easy for people. We included a lot of meditations in our book. So the, the womb awakening, the initiatory wisdom of the creatrix of all life. We, we put many meditations. And not only do we have written ones, we actually have audio journeys. So, so there are... You just read my mind. I was about to say, you know, today when we sound checked, after all these four or five years that I've been knowing you, um, you never told me that you was a musician. <laughs> and I yeah. Said, what? Yeah. So tell me yeah. about this album you and Siren put out. <laughs> right. So it's called Sacred Sounds of the Womb, and we created it. It came. It came through in 2014. It took about a year, and we had a lot of help from some other talented artists, Linda Go, Liz Lang, and 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 producers. And what 
the sacred sounds of the womb is, is a journey into womb consciousness. So it is a cleansing and purifying CD. It, it is a, it's a journey of spiritual consciousness as much as it is music. But what it so contains... So just by the idea of playing this music, because it was created with the intention from that space, it makes sense to me that when someone would play this music, they automatically, effortlessly become put into the flow of said intention, hence the womb music. Yes, exactly. Lovely. Well, that was the intention. And, and the intention... So part of it is the toning of sacred sounds, that it, it also has a, a rich background of vocals, layered vocals and didgeridoo and a ambient, um, in an ambient soundscape as well behind it. So it's a evocative, an evocative uh, album, but the sounds and the tones that came through are sacred seed syllables from the ancient language. So this, we call this language the Nostratic language. It's the language that predates any known language. But it contains the seed syllables common in so many of the sacred languages, Sanskrit, ancient Egyptian, et cetera, et cetera and some of the ancient Semitic languages, et cetera. And so, yeah, exactly. So it is a, a journey into womb consciousness. And, and that's why we created the album. And it takes you there. Believe me, this, <laughs> if you listen to this CD and you, you dim the lights and you put on a little bit of sage or incense or something, it will take you right there. It is, it's not lightweight music. It will, it will open doorways for you. Sounds like something that could be uh, entertained before bedtime. Well, yeah, we've we we listen to <laughs> we Saren and I actually <laughs> listen to our own music, and and we do it because what came through was beyond just us. You know, we open the doorways, and this energy came through. When we when we connect to it late at night before sleep, we just dim the lights and we go into this incredible altered state of consciousness, and 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 then that that consciousness really perfuses our dreams and calls in a certain frequency of, of dreaming. And this is one of, the, one of the pieces I wanted to get to as well. And so, so uh, it's such a vast topic, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to succinctly speak about it. But it's, it's this, is that essentially this, the cerebral cortex, which is evolutionarily speaking, the, the newest development on the planet. So the neocortex, what we think of, we're told that this is what makes us smart, smarter, quote unquote, smarter than animals. Although that's really debatable, <laughs> how smart we are as a species. But anyway, <laughs> right. uh, but it's this neocortex and the cerebral cortex in general that supposedly gives us our intelligence. And but it is, a, and it does in a certain way. It's a certain kind of logical, analytical, rational intelligence that gives us the capacity to get certain things done and created in the physical world. However, there is a far deeper and vaster consciousness in, in the brain. This is the, the, what we call the primal brain or the deep brain. And the architect or the governess of the primal brain is a, is a little known region of the brain called the cerebellum. Well, I mean, it's well enough known that it exists, but little known what it actually does and how it actually functions. And so our dreaming, our creativity, our mystical states of consciousness, shamanic consciousness, spiritual consciousness, our ecstasy, our ability to lose ourselves into flow moments in, in an athletic event or in dance or in lovemaking or uh, all of these things come from deep within our primal brain. They originate in this, in this mother consciousness that's down below the thinking analytical mind. And, and we, through all of our research and, uh, and our own intuitions, began to put together this picture of wow, there is truly, there are truly two brains in our head. There is this masculine brain and there's this older feminine brain with, with these vast capacities and, the, and these, I mean, truly vast capacities. And just to give you a sense of that, our, our deep feminine brain, our primal brain networks, and the, the chief architect of that really, which is the cerebellum, has 500,000 times more data processing power than our cerebral cortex, <laughs> 500,000 more times. So if you want to change your state of consciousness, begin to work on, these, on this deep brain and on this deep, we call it a feminine brain because it's, because it's the mother. It actually is the ground from even from which our daily waking consciousness births. And that's from an evolutionary perspective and our own developmental perspective. In our time in the womb, our cerebellum and our deep 
primal brain networks are on. They, and we've, we've spoken about this in an interview before. It's just the womb time origins of shamanism interview, I think oh, three years ago. But when we're in the womb, we have a mystical, uh, a psychedelic consciousness. We have this capacity to access other worlds. We can telepathically communicate with our parents when we're three weeks of age. We, can, we begin to move in our own rhythms spontaneously when we're seven weeks of age. We actually, it it's, can be seen when you put on a little EEG, which is a, um, it just reads the brain waves of the baby when they're in the womb. So you put a little electrodes on mom's belly. You can see that they're in the latter parts of pregnancy, baby is in dream state, is in REM, REM sleep state, which is a dream state. And so this is a dream time consciousness. And of course, we know it in children. You ask a three-year-old child, what was life like before you came to this planet? <laughs> and they'll tell you. They'll, they'll, they'll tell you what, what they were doing in their past life and why they're here and what they've come to do and who you are and what you're supposed to be. You know, and that begins to fade by, say, age five, six, seven, eight, when more of the cerebral cortex kicks in. But here's the thing is that we all have these pathways imprinted in us, and it's just about opening them and reaccessing them. And so it's, it's really astounding to see that everything we associate with the, what we call the feminine temple arts or the shamanic arts or the deep spiritual arts begins to revolve around the cerebellum. So our what's called embodied memory or the feelings held in our body or embodied movement, embodied consciousness, this is all routed through the cerebellum. And, and using sound, so this is why we created the Sacred Sounds of the Womb album, and as you know, as a musician yourself, sound takes people places. Why is it that you are drawn to be a musician and perform in, at, at night when the lights are low or, or, you know, or these great like, red lights or purple lights? Well, it begins to recreate its own shamanic experience, and, and moving and dancing as you, as you do this, it, it takes you right there. And you know about this ecstatic state that comes and but it's the same that's been practiced throughout the ages really opening these these deep brain networks yes i do know about that place and a lot of my musician friends we call it the zone and yeah. we call it digging in we also, <laughs> we also call it getting in there and making a sandwich <laughs> but the yeah. point of it all is i know that place and uh, my drum and i i mean we have a library of licks and but when something happens I'm playing bass and he's playing drums, and we do a lick that is just off the cuff, and it is not close. It is so exact. It's one spirit that moved through both of us and performed the, the particular uh, lick. But that being said, I wanted to ask you, when you mentioned just a bit ago about the child being aware in the mother's womb that still has access to the cosmic womb and can experience other things, Whether you, I want to know if you are or of the belief, do you have any wisdom in the field of or just your personal thoughts about it about the child entering into the mother before it is birthed do you think that in the beginning of conception that there might be little to none and then as the, the fetus begins to grow and birth becomes imminent and it's going to happen <clears throat> that the consciousness of the child begins to settle into the body more and more and more and more. Or do you think it just happens at birth, or do you think it's in there at conception? Yeah, yeah. Well, so we know a lot about this, and through our own deep shamanic journeys, and also, but also the research of of luminaries like Stanislav Grof, who who did pioneering work on what happens in the womb, both with LSD psychotherapy as well as shamanic breathwork psychotherapy. And uh, and also all of the myths and traditions and stories from all the different all the different world religions and and what we know is this is that the baby that spark of life the soul or spirit energy of the baby is fully conscious <laughs> fully conscious before he or she even comes in and and in many well in many of the African indigenous traditions and not just African indigenous traditions but other indigenous traditions there was this idea of contacting the spirit of the baby or the soul of the baby, of creating a soul song to help bring it in and guide it in. And so there was this, there was this telepathic two-way communication. We think of in the modern world, we think of this as being sort of a, a fantasy or make-believe. No, no, very, very real, this kind of telepathic communication with the spirit of the baby. And mothers who were tuned in 
and fathers who are tuned in will tell you, at the moment of conception, there is this shining light. There is this shining light that is palpable. And one of the, we, we travel this path with this incredible group of people. We call it a womb circle, the womb circle. And, and they write about their shamanic and mystical experiences of womb consciousness and conscious conception and different things in the book. And so there are lots of stories in the book. And one is about this in, a beautiful, beautiful conscious conception and conscious birth process. And, and, but really, the, the consciousness of the baby begins to move from this vast cosmic consciousness to a, a more and more embodied consciousness. So the consciousness shifts and one is not better than the other. It's really important to, to get that. It's not the, the cosmic consciousness is an incredible place that most people don't have contact with on a moment-to-moment basis. But as a, as a baby coming in, they do. But what happens is in spirit world, all of the souls, they want to come in and experience this earthly consciousness. They want to, they want to come in and bring this amazing celestial and cosmic consciousness into matter. Because matter is at the evolutionary edge. It is really evolution's edge. And it's so interesting that matter in Latin is the word for mother. So mother and matter. It's no, <laughs> co- it. it's no coincidence. And, and the root of matrix. or a, ma- a matrix is a, a, a field or a container of, of, of energy, of perception. And, and yeah, and so as, the, as, as this, the baby wants to come in and experience this cosmic consciousness in the body and on Earth, because Earth has the potential to be Eden. It's just a shift in consciousness away. And Eden was not, it's not a fairy tale. It, these myths have more truth in them than, 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 you know, I don't know. They have, they're true, in essence. Isn't it correct that at the moment of conception, I don't know if you said this, it was so much, and it's, I love our conversation because I'm trying to digest all of it. That the moment of conception when the sperm enters the egg, that there is a burst of light. That's true. That there's literally a burst of light. I thought I saw that on video recently. It, it, it's there. I mean, look it yeah. up. Probably find it on Google, YouTube, and look it up, and you'll see the, the burst of light. And I'm going to tell you something else that's going to blow your mind. In the, in, the, in the creation of the universe, in the creation of the universe, there was in the first few moments of creation, there was no light because the clouds of of particles were so dense and so thick, light couldn't travel through it. But early on, the the particles cleared, and there was an incredible burst of light as the protons and the neutrons came together and formed the atomic nuclei. This is this is in the very beginning. This phase or this pulse of the universe. There was a moment of light where this incredible burst of light shined out in the birth of our universe, mirroring the conception, our own conception, when the sperm joins the egg in the human, in the human development. So you will see these microcosm, macrocosm relationships that are obviously no coincidence. It's, it's entirely statistically improbable. This is one of a billion quote-unquote coincidences, but it's truly this magical, coherent living superorganism of a universe and even a planet that we live on. Someone <laughs> told me a while back how we're talking about the size of infinity, mm. that it all fits on the head of a pin. Mm. So again, microcosmic, macrocosmic, you know, if all of the macro fits into the micro it's everything. It's everywhere. There's nothing. It is not. The whole thing is this living, breathing <laughs> womb bed. Exactly. The whole thing is this living, pulsing, incredibly conscious, incredibly loving, incredibly connected, incredibly quantumly entangled womb bed. Entangled. That's the word I was looking for. Thank you, yeah. bro. Yeah, right. The quantum entanglement. It is is that's a whole nother piece. And Isn't it? It's it's almost so easy. It's difficult to understand. I mean, it's so it's so rich and there's so much to it. But as I have interviewed you quite a few times on these types of subjects, the more I get my ooh, ooh, ah, ah, monkey mind out the way and trying stop trying to logically process it and just to sit back and take it in. It just settles in me a lot more nicely, a lot more effortless. And then 
believe it or not, in that softening to hear the, the, the interview that you and I have and the dialogue that you're putting to me, there's so much more information encrypted in it that I could not have heard otherwise because I'm too busy in my ooh, ooh, ah, ah, monkey logical mind to be, to be able to even be in that kind of bandwidth. Exactly, exactly. And, and this is when we began to think <laughs> about, when we began to think about the creation of, of our book, we knew that the deepest knowledge is encoded symbolically, is encoded in story, is encoded in poetry, is actually coming through an energetic transmission between the lines. And, and, and it's exactly right. And when you can begin to open to that, that's when it really, when you become it, you know, when you begin to embody the, the information and become it. And, and it's so true. It's really, really true. As in, we got one minute. Give me a final thought, my brother. Oh, my goodness. Well. <laughs> As if you didn't give a bunch of them yet. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, so uh, it, this is, I'm going to say, you know, tune in. Tune into this incredible field of consciousness that is in your womb or hara. Tune in. Begin to drop down and open. And open these pathways and channels into this, into this incredible resource. And it is really at the evolution's edge. It is at our evolutionary wave as humans and as a species. And so I say, you know, go for it. And if you, if you want to learn more, we, lit we have created, my wife and I, a, a world for, for those who are interested to explore of, of courses, of, of pilgrimages, of retreats, of books, of music, and there's more coming. So, so join us if you feel the call. Azra, thank you, bro. It's always fun and enlightening. You, you sit me, it's like I'm sitting in a space shuttle when I talk with you. I got all this, a new power under my butt. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Hey, Keith, I should mention the website again, just for those who didn't Absolutely. hear. Absolutely. Thefountainoflife.org. So, so thanks. Thank you to everyone who's listening. Thank you, Keith. It's always a pleasure. And his new book, along with Siren, is Womb Awakening. And also, while you're there, make sure you check out the new album that he has out. Everyone, Keith Anthony Blanchard, I want to tell you about my show next week. A, a longtime follower of mine, uh, he's always here, Mr. Dan Holquist. He's going to be a guest on Center of Light Radio. And it took me some time, and uh, I'm just such a busy guy and I have a routine, and one day I realized I need to get this very, very intelligent gentleman on my show. He's got a new book out called The Solstice, Solstice Connection, Continuing Discoveries on Ancient Aliens, Giants, and the Paths of Gold. I'm excited about that. Every Monday night, Keith Anthony Blanch is sitting in his, his chair conducting affairs from the heart. Um, just remember, when you lay down at night, you have nothing to do. Breathe on purpose. Though you might breathe anyway. Breathe consciously. Breathe to move back into the stargate, into the womb, as Oswald has said. And I promise you, when you find yourself through the ceiling of thought, you will find yourself as well in a profound, deafening silence. If you achieve that place, Mm. something gets birth. Peace, love, and light to you. I will see you soon. Have a burst of light in you.